Ken Feinberg pointed this out. What they really need is they need someone externally to come in and basically crisis manage them and say, okay, these are the steps you need to take. Uh, these are the actions that you need to do and how you portray it. Any word on if that discussion is happening? Well, we know that they're definitely going to have to need many third party people to be doing these forensic audits because once when these apps take that information, Facebook doesn't have that on their servers. They're not going to be able to internally tell who may have violated their policies and what kind of data that they have. So they're going to have to hire many forensic auditors to actually go out individually to all of these apps. This is going to be a huge task, and it's still up in the air whether or not it's even possible for them to really do a full investigation on this. Dan, I want to come back to you because it's fascinating to have an investor in Facebook. I'm going to put up a full screen of some of the things at least that Facebook is facing right now. And I'm curious how an investor evaluates all this. They've got the FTC investigation. They've got Facebook users suing. They've got investors suing. They've got possible U.S. legislation, possible EU action. You've got a U.K. information commissioner investigating. As an investor, how do you sort this out and say, okay, this is what is signal, this is what is noise? Well, you're right, David. It's very, it's very difficult at this point. I mean, hopefully this will be something like we saw with Google. We know about uh, some of the uh, content that was showing up on YouTube that was very inappropriate, and they tried to kind of clean it up and, and, and get it in the right direction. So we're, we're hoping that Facebook can kind of get this behind us and, and kind of get through it and do the right things, uh, go through all these things that you're talking about. Um, but again, I think it's just still a little bit too early. You have to remember, David, that you know, we have Facebook on our buy list, uh, you know, pretty much shortly after the IPO, uh, stock dropped back and then it started to rally back up again. And that's when we put it on the buy list. So, you know, you take out the splits, we've got such a low cost basis that, you know, even at, you know, 150, 160, it's still a three or four bagger for us. So we've got a pretty good cushion where investors that might have bought the stock later uh, that don't have that cushion are going to have to kind of make that decision if they can kind of yeah. go through this tough hey, period where we can kind of weigh it out. Dan, are you buying the dips? Not at this point, not on Facebook. I think at this point you need to be still cautious. There's still more bad news to come out. Let it kind of work itself out. Let's see if there's any changes too to that $7.25 estimate that's out there. Right now the stock trades about 18 times earnings, very low. But I think we need to see if we start to see the estimates start to come down. And as I talked about earlier, if we start to see some change ups, in behavior yeah. by advertisers. That's to me is the real mm. key for them because as right. you know, it's they're driven right. by advertisers.